Welcome everyone uh, to this workshop on ecofeminism in Latin America. Um, my name is Bärbel Henneberger. I'm a German geographer, but living in South America for the last uh, 12 years. And I will support this workshop with the moderation. Um, as you might know, there is many female eco activists in Latin America. Uh, many receive threats or are even killed for their work. Um, also, violence is um, sadly a huge problem down here, especially against women. And also environmental pollution affects women often more. Being a woman in Latin America can be dangerous. Being a woman defending the environment, even more. Um, without further ado, I want to present our main speaker for today, um, Carolina Trichet Paredes from Chile. Welcome. Uh, feminist and scientist, she's going to speak now about ecofeminism in Latin America. After her presentation, you're welcome to ask questions. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Carol, for being with us. Um, let's get started. Yeah, thank you. Thank you Barb, for the presentation and to for the for you to have me today. So how today I will try to do like an overview of ecofeminism, like because it's a huge topic. And also I will focus in Latin America because I am from Chile and I think um, I I can talk about it because I have been I I leave it there. So first of all, something about me for you to know. I'm a physicist by schooling. I've been living in Germany for the past a lot of years. I don't remember, 15, I think. I did work in science. And since three years ago, I started my own startup doing the digitalization of waste management that brought me to the some ecofeminist side. Um, and now this year I started to, to study public policies in the Billy Brown School for Erfurt University. So my um, I'm part of the red and the network, the network of, of female feminist Chilean that we are all migrants. We we try to uh, bring awareness of what is going on in Chile and in Latin America and in our territories. Uh, put it uh, out there all the human rights violations that they are happening today in Chile and in other places. And as you can see, I have two daughters. So first of all, um, what it is ecofeminism? It's just a branch of feminism that see environmentalist and relationship between women and the earth as a fundamental practice. What doesn't mean that? that we believe that we are part of a complete uh, a system and our our relationship with nature is fundamental so if we doesn't if we don't take care of our home then in this case is the planet it's not going to be well and also since in latin america we have the sense that the mother earth is a female we combine this patriarchy uh, way of living or how the society has been brought it up for 2000 years is, is the same. Mother Earth, it's been violated. It's been put it again, a lot of uh, pressure, violence and cannot be free. So we, we fight for all the rights. Um, we call the, the land Abja Yala that comes from um, a native language from the um, uh, Panama Amazonian part that means land of full maturity or land of beetle blood. That means that the, the earth can give us anything. We need shelter, we need food, medicine, life. And uh, Pachamama is Mother Earth. And that is uh, a de um, deity, a goddess from the Inca people that is still, we still call her till today. Our cosmovision, like the way we see, is that we is not human sector or like, um, like the Western culture see it. We see it like as a part of a whole. So it's not what we want. It's like what Earth wants or what or what is our part in all, all this system. So all that is, I would say, the, the, the background of all the ecofeminist 
or the activists that they do um, nature activism. Our fight at the moment, many of them, in Latin America, since the colonial time is ecletism, meaning like Latin America and Africa are the biggest extract site of the, for minerals for the, for the Western Europe, that means I would say Europe. Um, there are so many places that there are, we call it land of sacrifices. That, what does it mean? That is a piece of land that there it is some mineral or something like is super pressure. And the corporate, the multinational, they don't care and they just break it there and take what they want without asking anybody. They don't care if some people live there, if they have been cultural, like living there forever, they don't care. That brings deforestation. This is uh, something that, you know, the over 50% of the deforestation in the world is in Latin America and three countries in Latin America on South America, they have the 70% of the deforestation. Uh, Brazil, Peru and Bolivia. That is all happening in the Amazonia. That is very bad because have an effect that is uh, a shame effect, meaning like, of course, nice trees, a lot of green, a lot of prime material for do whatever they wanted to do, but that affect all the vegetal uh, uh, flora, all the fauna, uh, all the animals they are dying there, and the land that there is exposed of the uh, uh, of this forest being taken out is not good you cannot use it after so that means that some people say oh but then you will have a lot of land a lot of space to do like agriculture or whatever it doesn't work like this it will not work you need to prepare that 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 land for many years so people that they have been living there after a company and cut the trees they cannot use it for, for years. So deforestation is not just cutting the trees and then to, to say like, oh, you say, just you plant more trees. No, it's like cutting the trees and killing the land. The land will be killed. And, and also species or animal farming that since the nineties, in the nineties, animal farming was 30% of the world meat production. That was a lot. But by 2005, it is already 40%. The numbers today, they are not really clear because a lot of lobby coming in. So they, if you see an, um, a, a report that say like, oh, um, animal farming today is like, I don't know, 25%, perhaps that is not true. Animal farming come directly in connection with deforestation because the laws, I will, I will talk about at least in Chile, the laws of agriculture or, or animal farming, they are written in a way that if you are going to do like a business and you will going to bring money to the country to, to make the GDP grow, there is not, a, there is, there will be like a, an industrial non-harmful, uh, I would say activity. So no, uh, Nature, I mean, no studies of natural impact will be done. So a lot of land is being different, clean up, so no forest, and then to put the animal farming, and that brings deforestation, lack of water, uh, and many other problems. In Chile, in general, I will talk now in Chile. In Chile now, water is private. It's a private good. What does it mean? By constitution in Chile, e, I, if I want, if I have enough money, I can buy the right to own a river or to own how many liters of water per second that is produced by a, a source of water, a spring. That brings that there are places in, in Chile that you um, that before they were they were rivers, but now they are not. Most of them, uh, the extractives for minerals, 
they buy the right to get the water because they need it to clean the minerals. So today we are many places like Petorca, uh, 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 other places in the north of Chile that they don't really have water and people today, they don't have water to live. And they are, we are fighting for them to get the right to have water. Even if water is a human right in Chile, we don't have it. So here you can see some pictures. These pictures are taken in five years apart. So it's really, really heavy. One of the biggest things that drink the water are avocados. So if you see avocados in the supermarket, as a person, I will ask you, please don't buy them. Try not to. They're amazing. I love avocados, but avocados, they are a trees. They are, origi they are original from Latin, from South America, from Chile. They, they are used trees. They need a lot of water, a lot. And, but they are, now they are being farmed. So you have forest of, of uh, paltos, of avocado trees. They need a lot of water. And these forests of avocado trees, they are making people living in the droughts completely. Another problem that is also brought it to, uh, for all this activism, all this mindset of that, I, if I have a company, I need the right, I have the right, is seeds. The TTP 11, you have a, uh, the TTA is the same, but in the other. There is one in Atlantic and then one in the Pacific. The TTP is a, is a huge uh, commerce, free commerce uh, agreement that the all countries from the global north, they are trying to set. Uh, that basically what they say that any genetical, the genetically value like crops, they will be privatized. There, there, there are the women that they are, um, um, now they are gathering together in different countries. And now they have also a huge community in Latin America. They, they, they are collecting seeds to save them from being taken out. And that is a huge problem that nobody sees because nobody talk about it. It's something like will come not today or tomorrow, but will come in five, 10 years. There are already problems in North America, in the United States, where like bees, they can, they can pollinize different crops, but some crops, they are genetically modified to be more better. And, but the bees, they don't know it. And then other, the big companies, they will sue the small uh, agricultures and because they are using this, these special um, crops. This is a very huge uh, problem at the moment. It's called, it is a big company, perhaps you are hearing it, like it's called Monsanto. The other, the other big problem that is nobody talk about it, and I, I call it the grand secret, is waste. That is my subject that they start, that is brought, brought me here. So for that, I want you perhaps to see this video because I think it's a very nice. It is only five, min five minutes, so I will let you guys see it.
Um, yeah, Carolina. Um, yes. Uh, it's actually not possible to hear the sound. You don't. You don't hear the sound. Yeah. Can I? So can I? Perhaps share you the link, uh, and yeah. then you can see it later. Then because yeah. I didn't know. Sorry, guys. I we didn't. We test everything, but that. I'm super sorry. Yeah, it's actually a problem with the Zoom that uh, it's not possible to transfer sound from the uh, screen yeah. sharing. Sorry. No worries. Even the pictures speak for themselves. That looks terrible. Yeah, so I will try to explain to you what does it mean, what, why I wanted to, sh to share this video with you guys. When I started studying, um, I waste. It was something very personal to me. I was, you know, like everybody has done this, oh, Maricondo, oh, where I need to clean my, my life, whatever, you know. And I started to, to see that this is not easy to know where goes my, my waste. So I started to go into deep, more deep, like where it goes, it goes to recycling, where it's going, what's going on. And then I say like, okay, I'm living in Germany, sounds amazing. Let's go away from Europe. And I arrived to, of course, easy Chile or Latin America. And I noticed that is around 1 million people living or 1.5 million people, that is the statistic, are living in the, in the trash and for the trash. That's what does it mean? They live in the, in the, uh, in the landfills. So they, they are living in the places where the, 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 the trash, our trash is dumped. And they go out there to search for food and for way of making money. And that is terrible. For that amount of people that live in that condition, 86% are women and kids. They go and store waste. And then they try to make the circularity. What does it mean? They they recycle. They 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 learn which one they have they have value money value, and they separate it. But the violence that this activity brings to to kids and to women is terrible. So, and working in these circumstances is not easy for them because they are not. Um, uh, they are not. They are not professionals. So they go and sell it to a professional person that is expert in waste, and then this person sell it for the two or three times the value. In Chile, for example, a carton today can cost two euros the kilo. Tomorrow, fifty cents. The day after, tomorrow. They don't need it, so they will not buy to you. So they don't know what is going on. It's a highly informal um, work. There is full of uh, raw material that is super nice for business, but then it's, uh, there is, it's not a public policy or a public uh, issue at the moment. And there is no statistic or not a well done statistic for these people I mean, for the government to know how many women or how many kids they are actually living today in the trash, how I call it. Waste people, there are some people call them. There are some uh, ONGs that they work them and what we do is trying to go to them. What I did, I went to Chile to work and I went, I went there and I tried to work with them and try to understand what they need and actually they don't need much. They just need a professionalization of things. But this is a huge problem that is going into ecology because today we always work out and we don't want to buy more plastic bottles. We need glass. We don't need this and we need that. But actually there is already enough trash to, 
to take care of it and we need and it is something like it's not being um, work on. Okay, and then I will uh, have like Bar uh, Barbara say something in the beginning, say like it's very dangerous to be a, a eco-feminist in Latin America, and that is really true. By not only woman, but to be an eco uh, an environmentalist in Latin America or in the world actually. By 2019, so last year, 212 people were killed just because they were known as an activist. Two thirds of the people, they're Latinos. That is amazing because two over three people, they are killed because they are environmentalists, they are Latinos. And that is because of the mafia of the deforestation or for the people like they want minerals or water. 40% of that people that they're killed, they're indigenous. Latin America, it's most of the most of the environmentalists they are indigenous because they live from the land, they understand they are being robbed. Five percent of the global population is indigenous. Ninety percent of all the attacks they happen in the Amazon. Last year, most of the people there, this for these two hundred people, fifty people were killed. They were from Colombia, and from that, ten percent they were women. Women, they are, the, they know what they need to do because we are living in a very macho patriarchal society where women, they are, we are by ourselves. We have kids, men's goes away. When that happened, some women, they need to start working. And some of them, they work from the land. They, they grow the home crops and then they sell them. Or they are living, um, they do ecotourism or they, they knee and they have, uh, I don't know, llamas. In Bolivia, normally women, they, they grow llamas. But then when the big industry come and then they will take away this main source of, of, uh, of surviving. So and then they come and say like, no, I need to, do myself a favor and I go away and I go and against all these people. In Chile, we have uh, Macarena Valdez. Aquí I show you Macarena Valdez and Berta Cáceres. They were killed both in the 2016. They were very well known in, in Latin America. Berta, she was very gruesome killed in Honduras because she was against the, the fascist system and she really wanted to make a better life for all the, the women and from the environment. And Macarena was the same. She, she was a Mapuche person. They are our indigenous in Chile. She wanted to, she was saying the companies they are coming from Europe and they are planting uh, pine trees and uh, eucalyptus trees. They are not good. They are taking away our land. And suddenly one day she was killed. They have, they have been proven that she went, she, wa she was, she killed herself. She was already killed, like she was hung. And this is very, very sad because we all know that when you as an environmentalist, if me, me not because I'm not a, fa a face person, but when, if someone is an environmentalist and this person, goes against the status quo of the situation, they will be killed in, a, in, in one moment or the other, or a family are really harassed. So yeah, it is very dangerous place for people like they are going against these forces. So now I think this is it. If you have any questions, well. Sorry. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Carolina, for your excellent presentation. Um, before we come now to your questions, um, I would just want to like to point out uh, good news from the region down here. Um, so Nara Bare, uh, the woman in the middle, um, the president of the indigenous people of the Brazilian Amazon, she was awarded the Human Rights Prize uh, just some few days ago. Uh, she's one of the main fighters against Brazilian President um, Bolsonaro. 
uh, and his terrible environmental politics in the Amazon. And she's highly in danger, receiving threats on a frequent base, but even though she is holding up the fight. And yes, so if anyone of the participants now have any questions, please go ahead. Just ask away. <laughs> I would have a question um, if no one else right now wants to speak. Um, I wanted to ask you, Carolina, how do um, European politics influence those situations, especially the waste management in the global south? Uh, that is actually a very interesting question. Um, you know, Europe, we are living in a world that the status quo is Eurocentric. So what happened in Europe, it is correct. So we think like, oh, in Europe, we have amazing laws. For example, in Sweden, they passed a law many years ago that they will give back all the uh, minerals that they take away from countries like I don't know, Ghana or Congo. For example, so selenium or cobalt, no, because it's very difficult, but uh, selenium in this case. There are, there are minerals that they go into the batteries and into any tech, any tech um, instrument, and they send it back completely refined. But then these countries, they don't have the technology to take care of it. So they actually, they go and ends up in dumps. These dumps, they create a huge problem, environmental problem, because they are completely toxic for human beings. And of course, who, who will live just beside the dump will be people very at the lower um, economy. So they will work on them. They know that they can perhaps find that a piece of this metal that is, already, is working or worth something. So they will go and take them and then resell it. And that brings an, a, a second problem. But since it's already not the per the global north problem is is not like it's nobody's problems. Also, uh, something more more German. Uh, Germany have a very nice law that they say that by for German for Germany is is illegal to export waste. But there are so many loopholes, and they had. Also, since they have so many contracts with uh, Swiss companies that they take care of the of waste, they sell it to them, they take it, and then plastic German is being sent to uh, Malaysia or Philippines. And then they are creating another big problem over there because these countries, they don't have the technology to take care of this uh, plastic that for us could be, um, in, as I mean, uh, Europe could be a prime uh, prime material to create new goods, but then they don't have it. So that uh, when we think about what is good for the environment, we have to think about what is good for environment, but for the people that they are living in the environment. So in Europe, we need one type of solution. In Latin America, we need another type of solution. In Africa, as you, we need to think about people living in the places, not just tell them what to do. That is true. <laughs> um, anyone else has uh, maybe a question now? If not, I, I would like Ferris time uh, I have like a second question, <laughs> sorry. Um, I, I would want to ask if there is like any approaches for possible solutions um, for those issues. Uh, for example, the, the topic on, on seeds in Latin America is like a, a thing that is that is really important, I think. And um, do you know like like any options that, that could improve those situations? Well, um, this, uh... We call it the recolectoras de semillas, so the woman um, harvest of seeds. It is a huge coalition of Latin, Latin women that they start in the north, like Mexico or Baja California, until all the way down. There is a, that started when the TTP 11 was created like 
in 2000 or before when Monsanto, one of the biggest companies like now is owned by Bayern, Bayer, mm. you know, yeah. <laughs> so it is very sad because Germany is starting to be involved in a lot of eco, eco issues. I, for me, it's very sad. So uh, when Monsanto started to sue um, this tiny la um, agriculture uh, people, like perhaps me, I got my crops, but it was no normal maize in Chile or in Latin America. And we, grew, we grew a lot of like maize and uh, wheat. We have normal one. Monsanto had the huge land in the beside, but and then bees, they were like pulling sides and bringing your, your type of genetic code to mine. And then Monsanto was like, you are, Robin mine genetic code. So I sue you. And they sue so many people. And then the woman said like, this is cannot be because we are losing what is our inheritance. We're losing our reality. And then we are having these crops that they are being created in the laboratory. As a scientist, <laughs> it is good. It is a huge step forward if you see research, but as a scientist, when you do something, when you do a job, even I did, my, my background means physics and it's robotics, nano. Normally we think about the drug delivery, but you need to think about if you are doing your, what you're doing, it will bring good or bad. My, in my case, when there were a project that we were always asking, this is, is a project for defense or for research. And if it was for defense, many people, they were saying like, I don't wanna work because normally they go to work, you know, toward like weapons and stuff like that. Other, they don't care and they do. But ethics on this is very important. So what happened that women started to say like, you know, we are going to start uh, gather and collecting seeds. And actually they do, they, you have in your home, like different crops, different things, just grow them every year, trying to take them and then collect the seeds, take them, taking care of them. And if you need, if you meet another woman that you, you, you exchange, you give me that, I give you that. So there is like a, a chain of, of good help going around Latin America that also what we want as this woman one is to save the, you know that the um, the original seeds from the people from the country, like in, in between Peru, Bolivia, and Chile, there is around three hundred type of potatoes. Actually, we separate them, so it's not so easy now to to get like a, a lila potato in Peru, because the lila potatoes they are only in the south of Chile. So they these women they really know what what crops they are growing in this area, why. Also, they will know what is good for, for medicines or not, or what are good for eating. Some other are good for other things like uh, dyeing your clothing, put it color, for example, not for eating. So they, it's growing like a knowledge and taking care of your heritage, natural heritage. Thank you so much, Carolina. I think those like approaches, they give some hope that there is uh, possibilities to, to change a bit the system also. Um, yes, so when there is no uh, questions from the rest of the participants, um, I would thank you again so much question. for the excellent presentation. Oh, question. Hey. Yes. Um, yeah, maybe broad question, but um, as someone just living in Germany, do you know any initiatives or campaigns that people can join here to make things better for South Americans in these topics? In these topics, as like common problem, I don't, but there are so many, like if you, if you go on Google, uh, you can get a lot from like, I don't remember, the, I remember the name, but it's in Spanish, all the information. But this woman, um, this woman um, collector of seeds, they have a, they always ask for like, a, they have a small projects. 
if you are interested in it, I can search and I can send you back some. There are many. Also for like for waste management, there are many Latin American different countries. There are also some in the Amazonia at the moment, like to stop um, deforestation. But must I must say that today, like most of it is uh, is it taking care of like COVID. It's everybody's COVID center, but. Uh, if you if you write your email in the in the chat, I can search and I can send you some. If it is good for you, that sounds good. <laughs> Thank you, Carolina. Uh, um, is there any more questions right now? Do you hear me? Yes. yes. Um, I have a question as well firstly thank you for the, your for your lect uh, for not le lecture but for your presentation it was really interesting and i have a question that is rather specific for chile so i have some chilean friends who told me that there's the new constitution maybe coming up and that there was this um what like do you have some hope for like um like um yeah feminism and eco like those like those eco feminism and this like new hope for Chile in this may maybe new area? Um. I, very good question, actually. I haven't, I've been working also with a group of Chilean activists. And we, ha we work very hard to make people outside Chile vote and win this referendum in, in Europe. Uh, we, uh, this process will be very strange, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, we now, we started with hope, now we don't have, and for sure next week we will have a lot of, because it's a very volatile process that is going on right now that is very related to what's going on in the street, like people fighting. The, um, the convention that will write the, the the new constitution will be 155 people that they will be uh, will be choose by by then by people like in uh, direct uh, voting mm. it will be paritary so that means that it will, should be 50 50 no more than 45 or this is the minimum so 45 minimum 45 men or 45 percent women i mean mm -hmm. 50 50 also yesterday no the day before yesterday was one of these uh, from these 155 people they were they going to be 17 seats that they are only for our, uh, for indigenous people from mm -hmm. chile mm -hmm. so that is giving us hope that the new constitution will be focus in what the people need. And at the moment, what people need in Chile are normal rights, water, <laughs> like it sounds super, it's like blows my mind every time I say it, but we need water, the right to have water, the right to have education, they have the right to have um, health, uh, a place to live. That is a place to live doesn't mean a house only in, over your head but a place that you're going to be there and will be healthy. There are places like in Chile, one is called Puchuncaví. We call it sacrifice zone because there is a company, an uh, industry that is bringing out so many gas, polluted gas that two years ago, they, it was a toxic um, cloud mm. that actually intoxicate all, all the kids from this area got intoxicated like neurologically. Mm -hmm. And then today, the day today, they have like kind of uh, problems. So we want a house that is nice. So nature, feminism, I don't know if it's feminist, it will be feminist because feminist brings a lot of other things, <laughs> but paritary doesn't mean feminist. So, but we are going, We I think we are going into the right direction. I hope. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Carolina. Is there any more questions? Yeah. If not, um, thank you so much again, Carolina, yeah. for the excellent presentation and everyone for the questions and participating. Um, a quick reminder also to join us at the panel at 8 p.m. I'm going to put the link 
in the chat right here also right now? Did it go? No, did it? Can't see it? No, it's not. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Stefan. <laughs> okay, so thank you everyone for participating and have a good evening. Yeah. Bye. Thank you, guys. I, I let my email if you want to uh, contact me to ask me any question, please feel free. Thank okay. you, Barbara, for the invitation and to host me today.